19th Street. Travis Johnson writes for the Associated Press, covers Penn State, but covers much more. And Travis, I have you on. We have you, Paul and Craig, as well, about Penn State, Auburn, and James Franklin. But I saw your note. We were just talking about the the passing of Norm McDonald, and you had yourself a note on your Twitter feed as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's a, a terrible loss. I mean, you know, it's just my opinion, but I, Norm is one of my favorite comedians, and I think it says a lot. You know, I'm, I'm 35. And, uh, you know, uh, I have a, a bunch of text message threads with a, a couple of different groups of friends. And for about the last two hours, they've just been bombarded with links to Norm bits and funny late night appearances. So, uh, I, yeah, I think uh, he, he definitely uh, spoke to a lot of us. All right. So you saw what happened yesterday. How much has it been, as James Franklin doesn't want it to be a distraction, that USC has an opening for a head coach? Yeah, you know, I figured that would come up today at his press conference, and it did. I don't know how many questions it took, but, uh, you know, he diffused it pretty quickly and said that, uh, you know, it's not something that he's really going to talk about. Uh, I know he has come out in the past and said that, uh, you know, he would uh, addre- always address these things with his players. And I know that um, since some stories were published today, he did make a note of that at the press conference that he would be talking to his team about the situation and about his name coming up. Um, we we'll probably won't be privy to that message, uh, at least for a little while, but um, – you know, that's how he's kind of dealing with it right now. And I think, uh, when, you know, when you have the success that he's had, I think, uh, you know, his name's going to continue to come up. You know, he's a young guy still. He's uh, a great recruiter. He's, he's done a really good job of, uh, of bringing guys that, that have moved on to the next level. Um, so I think uh, it, it's going to ha- have to be something that – I think it's something that his players have gotten used to, but I think uh, right now I think he's focused on this game. Uh, it is a bummer, though, because of their – the fact that right now they've started out really good, that win at Wisconsin is huge to start out, especially coming off such an unbalanced and sloppy year that they had last year. Uh, yeah. is, is this a team that you can see winning the Big Ten if, if they if they keep on track? I mean, I think I, I think so, definitely. I mean, I, I know that, you know, I've been covering the team for a couple of years now, and, um, you know, there, there's plenty of times where I think in the past they would have maybe folded in that game late, um, not been able to play the defense that they played. And uh, something that jumped out to me, you know, right away, and I'd written about it the, the maybe the next day, two days later, is, I mean, their defense was on the field in the first game of the season on the road at Wisconsin for 42 minutes. And look at the success that they had. You know, um, it's a defense that – it's a team, I think, that's, that's really going to go as far as its defense can take it. And uh, I, I think this defense is, is pretty deep. I think there's a lot of guys that – uh, secondary spots that can that can play in the box, play different positions, uh, guys that can blitz and get sacks and, and contribute in that way. And I think their linebacking core is, is the same way. So um, it, it's a dangerous group, and I think the offense is, is coming right along. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question rather succinctly, I think, yeah, they, this team could, could win the Big Ten. Going back to, to James Franklin for a moment, Travis, a question I've been wondering about the last couple of days. Why is there such a connection with he and USC? You know, that's a, I, I, that's a good question. I think, uh, you know, it would just be my opinion and speculation, but I think, uh, you know, USC is obviously, uh, you know, I, I had some experience out there a little bit when I was in college uh, writing for a student paper and covered Penn State and uh, went out to the Rose Bowl in 2008. So, you know, I was kind of like this uh, this southern Pennsylvania hillbilly of sorts at that time and, you know, kind of the bright lights of L.A. for me. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I think, I think James Franklin is a, is just that he's a he's a um, an outgoing personality, um, you know. I, so I think maybe that, and obviously the success he's had, you know. And right. I think the recruiting um, it's a it's a, a fantastical recruiting destination for the reasons I said before. Um, you know, I've lived in Central Pennsylvania for a, a little while now, and uh, <laughs> you know, you like four seasons here. Um, but you know, I think a, a couple of different reasons, maybe those would would be the be the ones, you know, his success and just. You know his personality seems to maybe fit with their what they would look for there, and, and it'd be an easy program for a guy to sell that is good at doing it. Gotcha. How much? Yeah, okay. I, and we have been wanting to know yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's, 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 he's so linked to them. Every time that job gets brought up, I was just I was searching for like some like like degree he got from there back in the you know like and there's really no connection it's just yeah like you said he's a great football coach and it's a big job so that makes sense how much how much did ohio state losing raise the uh interest level not that penn state doesn't feel like they can win a big 10 or wisconsin although Mm -hmm. penn state's already beaten them or maybe even a few others as well iowa uh, michigan if they could ever sustain some success how much did that loss maybe perk the ears of 
everybody else at the top of the conference? Well, I, I could speak for uh, the, at least the atmosphere here because uh, I was in the stadium on Saturday when Penn State beat Ball State, and they announced the result of the Ohio State game in the stadium, and it was pretty packed for a season uh, home opener. Um, obviously, we haven't had any experience dating back to 2019. This big stadium was empty all last year. But, uh, you know, the fans kind of lost their minds. Um, I think everybody, there's always kind of a collective uh, letdown when Penn State loses to Ohio State here in town. It certainly feels like that. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the fact that Ohio State, there's some vulnerability there maybe um, early on. I think uh, – it definitely makes that, that chance that we talked about a little bit earlier of winning the Big Ten a little bit more real, I think. Um, but this is a confident team. I don't think that they're going to see that result and think, oh, we have a better chance now. Um, I think this, this group's thought that you know they can go to Columbus and, and have success. So. so defensively, they were fantastic against Wisconsin. And at times, it's honestly being true that the, the Big Ten uh, defense is, is kind of more of the conference. Not that they can't get up and down the field and score some points. But then they were able to open up a little bit with Clifford, the quarterback, against Ball State. I know it's Ball State, but again, sometimes mm-hmm. people underrate those type of schools in that conference from Ball State. How much did you see as an improvement? Was it Ball, Story, uh, Ball State, or is that what Penn State can possibly do? You know, I, it's interesting you ask that. I, I asked Sean Clifford after the game, you know, was the, was the design to spread the ball around early like you guys did? Was that the design before the game? And he just kind of grinned and said, you know, get, get used to that. You know, not really saying whether it was or it wasn't. But um, I think he hit 10 different receivers in, in the first half. Uh, I think he's a lot more confident guy. You got to remember, you know, they they won four straight to end last season, and they started to look pretty good, you know, in the last two games offensively. Of course, they made the change in offensive coordinator, um, but I think from week one of this week of this season to to week two, I think you saw some some improvement there in, in Sean Clifford's game. Uh, maybe part of that is what you were saying, you know, part of it is being the Ball State defense wanting to maybe play a little bit soft and try to keep everything in front of them, not give up the big plays. Um, you know, Clifford loves to throw the deep ball. I know he's a guy that, that likes to go for it. Um, he's also a guy that, that runs a lot better than people give him credit for. Like the people that cover the team on a day to day basis here kind of know that he has that ability. But I think something that they've introduced this year that, that, that they haven't had in years is going under center. You know, they've, they've played in the shotgun ever since. James Franklin has, has taken over here with all the offensive coordinators that they've used. And I think going under center has maybe helped Sean, establish a rhythm where maybe you wouldn't get if you're constantly in the shotgun. You're, you're kind of telegraphing to the defense where you're going to be uh, every, every, every time you get the ball. Um, so I think that's helped. I just think that he's in a much better rhythm, and I think he's got the playmakers around him. How do you feel that they – or how do you get a feeling for Auburn this week knowing that they haven't played anybody? Like Penn State played Wisconsin. You kind of know, you know, in a tough situation what their deal is. Auburn has a really tough schedule, and this is the first game of that tough schedule. Have you been able to get a read on Auburn yet? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I, I was actually doing some research earlier today, and uh, I think, you know, Coach you know, James Franklin said at his press conference today, you know, scouting – and being anticipating what Auburn's going to do is going to be a lot tougher than, you know, Penn State's previous two opponents for the reason that Auburn brings in a whole new coaching staff, you know, and they, those guys have kind of been all over the place. Uh, Derek Mason is the defensive coordinator and uh, Bobo, the offensive coordinator. Franklin made the point, you know, what tape do we watch? Do we watch these first two weeks where they played some teams that, uh, you know, quite frankly, weren't, weren't testing them as much as what they Penn State possibly could. Um, I think that's going to be the, the interesting thing for, for me watching the game on Saturday. How did Penn State prepare? What tendencies were they uh, trying to be ready for? And I'm really looking forward to seeing Bo Nix. I don't think I've seen uh, – it's going to be interesting to see how he attacks the secondary um, and, and what Auburn's plan is. Because I think, like I said before, this is a really talented group. Uh, and it'll be nice to see them tested. And it, it's going to be nice to see a, a really good game, uh, hopefully. Yep, uh, and, and uh, now the state of Philadelphia, uh, the state of Philadelphia, the state of Pennsylvania, did they both not win Pittsburgh and Philadelphia this past weekend in the NFL? Is that everyone a little bit high and mighty up there? Uh, I was going to say, with the way you started with that, half the state might be on you. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty half and half. But, um, yeah, I have a lot of friends who are Bills fans, so they were kind of riding high thinking that they were going to walk all over the Steelers, and obviously that didn't happen. And the Eagles look pretty good, so – I don't know. I'm I'm a I'm a Ravens guy, so uh, it was uh, kind of a tough morning to wake up. Yeah, it was a heck of a game, though, wasn't it? 
<laughs> it was a good game. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's so much <laughs> that ending, was but, yeah. unbelievable. Both teams had it right there. And when o- uh, Oakland, good God, when the Raiders had the ball in the one-foot line, when the ball, the touchdown was called back and did not score, man, what a what a wild game that was. Uh, but the, it was, the, yeah, that was that was wild and, and great football on on uh, Monday Night Football. Thanks a lot for your time, Travis. Have a great day. Good luck having fun with this week, Auburn and, and Penn State. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having me. Nice talking to you. Travis Johnson covers Penn State for the Associated Press. I mentioned uh, Steelers in in Philadelphia both won in the opening week of the NFL season. Steelers beating Buffalo as a huge win. And Pittsburgh thrice.